What's up YouTube and welcome back for part 10 of the STI build. Uh, in this episode I'm going to be planning to put together the front of the engine, get all the timing together and uh, everything torqued in place, timing set, covers on. Might even do a little bit to the top and put some accessory brackets on top of the motor. Um, but we've got to get this thing together soon because uh, i got lots of other work I want to get done. So. I uh, need to keep on pressing forward and, and get it finished. So you know I've been probably about five or six weeks working on this. Uh, I don't have full time hours to put on it but I've been using what, what time I have to try and get this thing done. So uh, today we are going to get all of this together. I've temporarily just put on the couple idlers and uh, we, I did get one new idler to install here. Uh, the other ones are in really good shape. There's no play. There's no noise out of them. Uh, they, this engine really did have quite low mileage when it came out of the car, so they're in still reasonable shape. We are going to put a new belt on. We're going to reuse the tensioner, and then at some point in the future, obviously the whole set's going to have to be done. But uh, to keep costs down for now, because the block was so expensive, uh, this is what we're doing. Everything will be fine. Uh, that's why you know. I've just double checked everything to make sure it is going to be good. I'll start by torquing on these idlers, installing this one and torquing it down, and go over to the bench. We'll compress the tensioner and get it installed as well. And then we can go and torque all three of these to 28.8 foot pounds, uh, which is too high to go to inch pounds, a little bit too low for my, inch, my, pound, my foot pound wrench. So I set my foot pound wrench to 30 foot pounds to tighten these up. So this little idler here likes to fail too, but uh, this one's really smooth, no play in it. Uh, I've got to torque this smaller bolt to 18.4 foot pounds. It is easy to strip the aluminum out of this uh, bracket, tightening this bolt, so don't over torque. Um, so 18.4 converts up to 221 foot pounds, or 221 inch pounds. <laughs> 221 foot pounds. Perfect. These tensioners are quite durable. Uh, they do last quite a long time. Uh, what you generally look for is, is oil leaking out of the top here. Um, that indicates that a bad leak has started and the, the oil charge inside has now depleted. It will not have the same resistance and uh, the belt will be able to plunge it and shake around a lot, causing problems in a worn belt, um, possibly a jumped belt. So this one looks really good shape. Um, what all service manuals tell you for most vehicles out there is to vertically mount this in a press. So you'd sit this in a press and lightly drive down on the center very, very, very slowly. And basically by hand, hand pumping it down. And I don't have any type of vertical press yet. I probably will get something sm a small one that I can sit on the bench or something eventually. But I've always used a vise. I've never ever had a problem. Um, the secret is doing it very slowly. So if we get to the end here, light, very light pressure, and as you pull on it, you'll get a very slow movement as you apply constant pressure. And, and what it starts to f almost feel like is there's there's a drip of fluid making its way through. And as you just keep on slowly doing this, eventually you'll get it to the point that you can drop a key down through the housing and to hold the actual push rod in. But you want to go very slow. And once you've gotten to the bottom, which if you've gone as slow as I do, has taken you almost five minutes. You go into your 
large assortment of pins and keys that you might have. As you can see, I've done a lot of tensioners of all types. And once you have a good reasonable key in there and it's coming through the other side, you can just let this off and there's the tensioner ready to install again. You want to make sure you have this washer on the back side and you don't I don't you don't have to have the o-ring on but the o-ring helps keep the washer in place so that you don't lose it as you're installing. So here's a tensioner and it threads into here. And this bolt also goes to 28.8, but I'll put it to 30. I want to make sure you have good movement. I'm already going against myself. Don't put this idler on yet. <laughs> you always leave this one for last. Get your whole belt on and then put this guy on. Now, I don't know why. I've done so many Subaru time belts. I think I was just... Uh, thinking it needed to be torqued up with the other ones for some reason. So in order to line up bank two sprockets, I did order the Company 23, uh, I guess, timing holder tool. Uh, so as you can see, it's actually magnetic. It's got magnetic ends. It will stick there on its own. But as long as these hex ends drop into the cam pulley bolts, then we're, I'm going to be able to line up the pulleys where they need to be and then lock them in place so that I can place the belt on and everything will be maintained. So the intake needs to turn this way quite a bit and it could probably get locked down right here So then the exhaust needs to turn back to right about here. And I can lock this one down. And now the, the cams won't spring against the, uh, the valve springs and move at all as long as the tool's in place. And I can actually go ahead and start installing the timing belt now. Where you can see the, the cam sprockets on this side actually idle in the boat the, where they need to be in the center. And as long as the mark down here on the left points at the case on the little mark on the actual timing cover, the rear timing cover, and the same with the top mark on the timing cover, and then those two lines line up with those two lines then you're, you're, you're ready to install the belt. Very high quality belt. It's got a crazy industrial smell to it. It's uh, very heavy. Uh, you can feel this crazy blue coating. Uh, it's definitely not your standard belt. So it's got uh, timing marks, timing marks all over it. Uh, as long as you sort the crank like this and sit it on that way, because the engine rotates in this direction, we'll be good to go.
and just go ahead and double check all your pulleys. So at this point, everything's lined up, all the pulleys are torqued, we can go ahead and pull the pin out of the tensioner. And then usually what I like to do is just put a little downward pressure on it, not too much, just enough to see it move. And uh, we're ready to actually turn the crank, uh, turn it over a few times and just make sure all the timing marks line back up with the case. So now I'll take the uh, cam lock tool off. Just loosen the bolts. You can also go ahead and install these cam bolt covers. Uh, replace the O-rings as necessary. These ones have a really nice bulge to them. I'm going to reuse. These tiny little bolts go to 2.5 foot pounds, but might as well go to 30, 30 inch pounds. And the same with the exhaust one, they're this same torque. Make sure to reinstall all your timing guides. When you're installing these, probably about two or three millimeters distance, uh, or just kind of line it up to exactly the place that it came off beforehand. You usually can see where the bolts actually sat, sat and they leave a little stain. So now we have all the timing guides in place. There's one in the bottom right corner, two on the left hand side, and the one for the crank. So now I'll go ahead and temporarily set the crank pulley in place. Or the harmonic balancer. And now we're ready to turn the assembly as a whole for the first time. And I can hear compression already. It's a bit of a pull because the spark plugs are in. They'll just take a time, nice and easy. So we need to get two full rotations out of the crankshaft to get one engine rotation. We're getting close. And we are there. So you just want to come, come along, double check all the timing marks. Make sure everything lines up the way it should. Really difficult to see in here to see this one, but I think we just budged back the crank a little bit everything would still line up just perfect so I'm confident that it's it's all timed together properly and uh, now I can got to take this guy back off so we can put the timing covers on <coughs> I've given the covers a little wash uh, I mean they're not spotless or brand new looking but they look really clean. Go ahead and install the center cover first. And you're going through your, your your timing cover bolts and you've got this one strange one. It always goes down here in this bottom left hand corner. 
and the one the shoulder bolts go in the the more open holes these front cover bolts are 3.7 foot pounds I'm gonna go to 45 inch pounds Go ahead and put on the side covers. And this bottom left hand corner actually takes this little shield cover, but I would leave it loose temporarily because there's a plug that goes in behind it. The, si the side covers torque up the same as the center cover. So yeah, it's finally getting there. Uh, the front covers being all on it, it kind of looks like something you might buy as like a remanufactured unit or a rebuilt engine. Uh, but yeah, it, you know, it's a it's a fully assembled long block. So I guess uh, the next episode we'll be pushing on to the intake manifold. There's a few upgrade pieces to put into it before it gets bolted onto the top. I can't, I, I don't think it will be the next episode, but I probably next Sunday's video will be the intake manifold going on. But I uh, got to see what else is going on, so I can't promise anything ever. Anyway, if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please go hit that subscribe button for me. Leave your questions and comments further down below. And I'll see you in the next one.